Good morning. It's Monday morning, January 3rd. Happy New Year again. Today we read from Matthew 26, 14 through 16. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. You know, every year around Easter, it seems like the History Channel likes to produce something big that will debunk this Christian faith. I don't know what it is, you know, the History Channel, they don't do much history anyway. It's sort of a so-called History Channel, but I won't go there. The History Channel, um, several years ago on Easter, right before Easter, had a big splashy publication of the new translation of the lost gospel of Judas. And it was about four pages. um, And it was a story of a conversation between Jesus and Judas in which Jesus says, go and, you know, go betray me so that we can get this moving. And Judas does. And you know the rest of the story. Well, let's think. Okay. Scholars looked at this and said, okay, first of all, this is a horrible translation of this document. They've, they've done this for sensational reasons. Secondly, it's clearly a fake document from like the 5th or 6th century. I forget exactly. Imagine that you wrote something and, and said, oh, I found this document that Mark Twain wrote. But all your references in it to Twitter would be a little anachronistic. So it was that kind of thing. Um, And there's no evidence whatsoever that Jesus and Judas colluded in any of this. The Gospels make it clear that Judas betrayed Jesus' trust. Um, There are few people in the Gospels who are identified by the city that they come from. Um, And Judas is one of them. You know, he comes from Kerioth. Uh, so that tells you right away there's something suspicious about Judas. We don't know his family name. We know where he's from. We don't know um, Mary Magdalene's family. We don't know Jesus' family. Uh, there are a few other people that are identified that way. So it's it always kind of raises flags when you when you don't know uh, anything about a person except where they were born. You know, life is different in our society. But so Jesus, Judas goes to these priests and says, well, what will you give me? I'll, I'll find a way to, to, to help you arrest him when the crowds are not around. You know, Jesus would, would appear in the temple, just show up and start talking, be surrounded with crowds. And they couldn't exactly march into the crowds and push people aside and arrest him. That was going to cause problems, riots. Uh, The Romans would come rushing down the stairs and and put an end to it. So they didn't want that. They wanted to arrest him kind of privately, secretly. And Judas says, "I, I can help you with that, but how much, you know? So they give him 30 pieces of silver, which is a lot of money. Um, and, and, with any smarts, Judas should be able to take 30 pieces of silver and sort of translate that into a comfortable living for himself for the rest of his life. So he walks away pretty satisfied. And then he comes up to Jesus, and we're getting ahead of ourselves, but you remember that he, he um, betrays him in the Garden of Gethsemane in the middle of the night, and he comes up to Jesus and embraces him and kisses him, and he's told him, the one that I embrace, that's the one you want to arrest. So um, the guards and the police aren't even sure who Jesus is. I mean, which, which, which one of these people is Jesus? Well, they're, they're not even completely sure until Judas embraces him. So, so he's a necessary piece of this betrayal. Um, and I heard a preacher say one time that there are two people that no one ever names their child, Judas or Pontius Pilate. Um, well, Judas, I think, is a kind of a tragic figure. Um, 
it's often said in, in, in popular theatrical presentations of, of the story, the spin is, is many times that Judas was trying to get Jesus to, you know, let, if we're going to take over, let's do it. Let's, 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 let's have the conflict. Let's get the riot going. Let's, let's rebel. And so he's trying to sort of jumpstart Jesus. Um, that's the uh, perspective you get in, uh, I think, in Jesus Christ Superstar. It's the perspective in some other plays and movies. It's certainly the perspective in this lost gospel of Judas. Um, but you don't, that's not really what Judas is about, I don't think. I think he's more of a tragic figure. I think he he thought short term and he thought, well, I could make some money here. They're going to arrest him. Let's Let's facilitate this, and everybody wins except Jesus. Um, I don't think that Judas then uh, ends up um, condemned forever either. I think that the grace of God goes so far even to embrace Judas. I don't know that, but I that's that's what I think. Because the grace of God is unimaginable, and it's it's loving, and it extends further than we would ever believe that it does and so let's uh let's wrap our minds around that today if you can and if not it's okay uh, tomorrow we'll keep with uh, the journey and we end up in the upper room so we'll see you then have a great day